Chris from Teton Brown and today I'm here to talk to you about watering your lawn. Home lawn irrigation is one of the most complicated things in the whole turf grass industry. See there's so many different factors that go into doing it correctly. Now if your lawn is at all like this lawn with lots of exposed rock as well as rock hiding just beneath the surface, it's going to burn up and dry out much faster than another lawn with a good thick layer of fresh topsoil. Similarly, if you've got lots of these tree things all around your property and you're really shady, the lawn is not going to dry out nearly as quickly. Now, it should go without saying that a in-ground professionally installed sprinkler system is ideal for watering your lawn properly, but for a lot of reasons many people aren't really up for that. So if you don't have a sprinkler system and you're not planning on putting one in, have no fear. We're going to show you today how you can do it with a little bit of effort and a few pieces of equipment. So first, our equipment, a hose, probably a few hoses, sprinklers, and a coffee can. Actually, any uh, can that's got nice straight sides will do. We'll get into this in a minute. There are actually a lot of different types of sprinklers you could use, so we're just going to cover two of the basic ones today. Number one, the good old-fashioned fan sprinkler. This is, uh, this is the one that I used to love running through when I was a kid in the hot summer day out in the front yard. Uh, it just creates a nice fan pattern going back and forth, and you just put it out in an area and let it water away until you feel like the area's gotten a good amount of water. Uh, you can also uh, set this to go just to the right and stop, or just to the left and stop, so uh, if it's up against the driveway and you don't want to be watering the driveway, or the house, or something like that, you get the idea. Now, the other is a more modern version, and this is a uh, gear-driven sprinkler that will turn around in circles by the water pressure, and it'll spray out a nice even pattern. Uh, now, it looks a little bit complicated, but it's kind of nice because it's actually easier than it looks, but you can adjust this to cover a full circle or half circle, three quarters, or really just about any size uh, piece of a circle that you'd like to cover. So it's very nice, it's adjustable, and we'll get into another reason. In a few minutes, you can actually hook these sprinklers up onto a series, which is very nice. In other words, you get two or three going at the same time, covering a lot more area of your yard. Now, if you've been paying attention at all, you're probably wondering, what's the coffee can for? So, now we're going to get to that. See, it's important to understand how much water you're putting down. While every lawn really differs drastically in the amount of water it needs, a good rule of thumb and a good starting point is one inch of water per week. Well, depending on the water pressure in your house, that might take you, well, three hours of watering or 15 minutes. Yet one more variable that makes things difficult. So, we can use the coffee can to uh, get a good gauge as to how much water your sprinklers and the water pressure in your house is putting out. All you do is put it out in the middle of the sprinkler. Okay, so now we've got the uh, can out in the middle of the sprinkler area. What we want to do now is set a timer to a half an hour. After a half an hour, we're going to turn off the sprinkler and measure how much water is in the can. Now again, it's important to have a can that's got very straight sides on it. Otherwise, any kind of tapering creates a funneling effect where the amount of water inside the, the, uh, the can will be much deeper than the actual number of inches that you were able to water. I hope that makes sense. With something with nice straight sides, like a coffee can, you just measure the depth of how much water is inside the can after a half an hour. Now we're going to use one of these circular gear driven sprinklers. Now these are a lot more like the kind that they use underground in the underground sprinkler systems. And uh, they're kind of nice. They come with a stake so you can stick it into the ground wherever you want it. It's not going to move at all. And you can stick another hose on the other end of this and run it into another one of these. So you can get a few of these on a series and, uh, and cover a pretty good area of your lawn at the same time. That's all dependent upon water pressure though. If you start noticing that uh, they're not spraying out very nicely, you've probably got too many in the series. You need to take one off and make sure to put the black cap on the last one. Now if you'll take a look behind me here, I've actually got two sprinklers set up on the same series, just with a uh, hose connecting the two of them. This is a really efficient way to get the lawn watered. It covers a much bigger area than you could otherwise. and. Uh, <clears throat> Helps you cool off on a nice summer day. So now we've got our coffee can full of water and, uh, and we're all done watering. We've put a half an hour on with the sprinklers and we want to see what we've got here. It's actually pretty easy. You just put the coffee can on a, on a flat surface. Take a ruler. I like to use good old-fashioned wooden rulers. They're easy to read. And dip it down in there. Take it out and take a look at where the water goes up to. 
Now, we've got about a quarter inch of water here, and that's actually pretty good for a half an hour. What that tells me also is that if I want to water this lawn for uh, one inch of water per week, I just need to water four times a week for a half an hour each time. Uh, ideally spread out maybe every other day, that type of thing. You want to even it out as much as possible. Now, if I, I'm just not going to have the time to do four times a week, I could probably do 45 minutes a section three times a week. That will also give me an inch. Now, what about special circumstances? Are there instances where a lawn might need more or less than one inch per week? And the answer is absolutely yes. In really shady areas like this, you're probably not going to need as much water. Areas where there's a lot of direct sunlight all day, especially when you're right next to the road or a walkway or driveway where the asphalt and concrete is going to heat up and dry the area out even quicker, you're going to have to water those areas even more. The best way to proceed once you've started off by watering for one inch per week is to just take a good look at your yard. See how it's doing. Is it uh, staying nice and green and lush? Well, great. Uh, you might want to back off a little bit and see how little you can get away with watering. Maybe go down to three quarters of an inch per week and see what that does. If the lawn starts getting a little burnt out and dry again, then go ahead and push it back up. The idea is to try to get your lawn just enough water without going overboard. Now, what if you're watering one inch per week and it's getting all dried out and brown? Well, just the reverse. Go up to maybe one and a half inches per week and see how that goes. Really, after a little bit of tweaking, you should be able to get it down quickly, you'll know how much to water, and your lawn will thank you for it in the end. Thanks for watching.